Uh, Mike Goodchild needs uh, no introduction again, and then we'll go into our plenary speaks. All right, thanks, Diana, and, and good morning. Um, one of my measures of a meeting like this um, is the rate at which my own thinking changes. And on that score, this meeting certainly has been a huge success so far. Um, I have many takeaway ideas from yesterday, and hopefully I will today as well. Um, so what I'm going to say effectively uh, represents my thinking as of about 45 minutes ago. Um, <clears throat> welcome back to day two. Um, day two, we have essentially a similar format to um, day one, as Diana already mentioned, but there is a distinctly different flavor to it. Uh, and I hope this message um, gets across very clearly. Because what we have to do today is to start thinking in terms not of the broad canvas, but of particular actions and priorities. What is it that we can do? How as a community can we act? And to what extent can we indeed create a community? And so we're hoping that the idea labs, and, and as they're synthesized tomorrow in the uh, presentations, will be a set of very specific actions. And I say that because I think one of the things that I learned yesterday, and I, I was certainly aware of this before, but it was brought home very, very clearly by Tom Fisher's presentation, is how urgent all of this is. Because Tom used the phrase fracture critical, and whether we're talking about a fracture occurring on the San Andreas Fault, or a double dip recession, or some new disease pandemic, uh, whatever happens, it's quite clear, is happening fast. And we must therefore devise actions that are equally rapid. Um, in, in a sense, I think uh, T.S. Eliot was wrong when he said, this is the way the world ends, not with a bang, but a whimper. Uh, it seemed clear to me from Tom's presentation yesterday that the world is going to end with a bang, not a whimper. Um, I think we, we heard yesterday, and certainly um, we're certainly aware of this, that the set of tools we have to solve these problems is increasing exponentially. Um, there are some wonderful tools in 9.4. We already have some wonderful tools. An interest in GIS and awareness of GIS is also increasing exponentially. There are some problems that we are solving today. We have devised methods for addressing issues, for example, of land use change, as we saw yesterday. But the power of the tools can extend much further. And we are, I think, the community that can help extend the power of those tools to a set of issues much more like the kinds of issues Tom was talking about. Much of the evidence, much of the scientific knowledge on which those solutions will have to be based remains locked away. And GIS, I think, I've always thought, is one of the ways of releasing, implementing, that knowledge, making it accessible. This, this community is the one that understands this. And so that gives this community a particular responsibility. It's aware of the severity of the problem, and it's also aware of the power of the tools. So our task, I think, is somehow to bring these two together, how to connect the dots, and to do it quickly because speed is of the essence. So I'm an academic, and I represent what some people acknowledge is the second most conservative industry on the planet, the most conservative being classical opera. And at the same time, I have access to a younger generation of bright, intelligent, highly motivated people, the students that are currently in our universities and that will be the practitioners of tomorrow. How can we empower them? How can we enable them to take that enthusiasm and bring it to the solution of the kinds of problems we're talking about here. There are action items, I think, having to do with the tools. There are action items having to do with our education system, with our curriculum. There are all sorts of action items having to do with community, which we can distill out of this meeting and bring tomorrow into some kind of synthesis. How do we convince people that these are the things that they should actively pursue with priority and also with speed. Um, I'm reminded of several of the points in my own career when some meeting like this suddenly produced a whole series of opportunities and a real change in my own thinking. 
and one that many of us in the GI science community recognize is the meeting in 1977 in Endicott House on topological data structures, which led, for many of us, into the kind of GIS models that we, that we have today. Many similar meetings I've, I've experienced over the years. This could be such a meeting. This could be one of those meetings where a community forms and actions are taken and people follow up. And one of the things that makes, I think, a meeting like this particularly important is the varied backgrounds of the people who come. Uh, what we have here is a stew of different backgrounds. We have the potential for enormous creative tension. We have people here talking to each other who've never traditionally talked to each other in the past. We have an opportunity here to break down stovepipes and to do the kinds of things that are necessary to move an agenda forward. So I think that we have here the right mix to, de to devise some important priorities and actions. I think we should therefore seize the day. Let's carpe diem and let's make this the opportunity that I think it can be. So thank you. <laughs>